If you just got a Raspberry Pi or you're wondering how in the world to set it up, I just bought one a few days ago and I'm going to show you exactly what I did to set it up and install the Raspbian operating system coming up next. <laughs> I'm going to show you what you need to get started, and you may have some of this laying around the house, but if there's something in this list that you don't have, I've posted Amazon links in the video description to the most affordable options I could find. So you'll need a wired keyboard, a wired mouse, an HDMI cable, an SD card reader, micro SD card, Ethernet cable, power supply. I'm going to show you how in the next video to remote connect to the Raspberry Pi. So you won't even need some of these things. At the end of the day, you just need a power cord um, and possibly even an ethernet cable and that's it because you're gonna be able to connect to it from your laptop or desktop. Your Raspberry Pi doesn't come stocked with an operating system. It has to be installed, but you have lots of options. I'm going to install Raspbian because it's been optimized for the Raspberry Pi and it's based on the Debian Linux distribution. Navigate to www.raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads. There's two options here. Noobs is meant for absolute beginners, and I would consider myself in that group. It walks you through the setup and gives you options for installing other operating systems beside Raspbian, as long as you're connected to the internet. And this is what I indeed tried first, but I had issues with the install, and I ended up getting an outdated version that didn't pay, play well with some of the Python libraries I wanted to install. So I started over and installed Raspbian directly, and honestly, it was super easy, so don't be intimidated. So go ahead and click Raspbian, and you have a few download options here. Unless you have a specific reason to install a stripped down version of Raspbian, um, and there may be reasons for that depending on what you want to do, I would recommend just installing the desktop version with recommended software. The recommended software is going to include some tools, IDEs, and other programs that will make Raspbian more fun and useful for general purpose. Next, click the download zip button and start downloading. The file is pretty big, it's 2.3 gigs, so depending on your internet speed, this could take anywhere from about five minutes to about five days. <laughs> but while that's downloading, we can get some other things done. Let's format the SD card. So insert your micro SD card into the card reader and plug your card into your computer. You may get a pop-up that tells you that the card needs to be formatted. If not, then open up your file explorer and right click on the USB drive. Probably it will be labeled as F, but you may have a different letter depending on how many drives you have connected already. The format new volume window will pop up. Make sure that FAT32 is selected if it isn't already. Give the drive a name. I'm going to call this one Raspbian. Click start to format the drive. It should format pretty quickly. All right, now let's install Rufus, which is the program that we're going to use to image the SD drive. So navigate to rufus.ie. Scroll down to the download button. Click the download the file. The program is self-contained, so you won't even need to install it. So just search for Rufus uh, in your search bar or navigate to downloads, double click it and run. Rufus will load your USB drive by default. If you have more than one, you may need to choose it from the dropdown if it doesn't select the correct one. Next, click on Select, then navigate to the ISO file that you downloaded. Now you can click Start to begin imaging the drive. Click OK to confirm that everything on the drive will be erased. Alright, so let's fast forward through this part. It may take 5 to 10 minutes to write the image file, depending on the speed of your USB port and drive. <laughs> Click close, then remove the micro USB drive. We're now ready to unbox and set up the Raspberry Pi. And here is the Raspberry Pi 3B. Not the most recent model I know, but still nice. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability, so that's cool. Lots of instructions written in 50 languages, though only the first page is relevant. But who needs these anyway? That's why you're watching this video. Okay, here's the main attraction. Here's what the motherboard looks like. It's really as small as a credit card. We have a row of pins that can be used to connect all kinds of sensors and various other attachments. We've got four USB ports, I believe these are USB 2.0. And we have an Ethernet port, which we'll be using. Even though this has Wi-Fi, the Ethernet's going to be faster, so I'm going to use that. On this side, we have a micro USB power port, and an HDMI port, and a sound jack. Okay, let's get this thing connected. 
I'm going to connect with a wired mouse, and the reason is that I tried a wireless mouse before and the lag is just unbearable. And I've not done enough research to know why that's the case, but it's a common problem and a wired connection just works better. Next, plug in a keyboard. Now let's get some internet connected to this bad boy. Before I get too far ahead, we need to install the micro SD card on the back of the Raspberry Pi. Next, I'm going to plug in the monitor with the HDMI cable. And finally, I'm going to plug in the micro USB power cord. Just a few notes on this. There's no power switch on this device, so as soon as you plug it in, it's going to turn on. So make sure that you're ready for it. Secondly, because I'm cheap, I didn't get a power cord. I had an extra Samsung charger that meets the requirements of 5 volts and approximately 2 and 2.5 two and amps. I have a link posted in the video description that talks about the power requirements. They claim that low voltage will not harm the device, but you may get some wacky results. In any case, if you see a yellow lightning bolt on the upper right hand side of your screen, you know, that you know at that point that you're taxing your system and you're running on low voltage and you'll need to cut down on some of the things that you're doing or that you have attached. So since I can't screen record this while I'm installing the operating system, I'm going to do my best to show you uh, what the screen looks like as it's booting and installing the OS. There's an initial load up screen of raspberries on the top, then shortly afterwards the GUI loads up. You'll be asked to select your language, and I'm just going to go with the defaults here for time's sake. British English is good enough for me. Next, you're going to be asked to change the password. By default, the username is Pi, P-I, and the password is Raspberry. Next, you can see that there's a black border around my screen, and the dialog is going to ask if you see a black border. And if you check the box for yes, the screen will be resized to the appropriate scale the next time you reboot. Next, you can set up Wi-Fi. I've got the Ethernet connected, so I'm just going to skip this step. Now you're asked if you want to update the software, and this is just going to install any updates that have occurred since the image file was posted online. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to skip this step as well. Now that the setup is complete, I have a fully functional operating system. At this point, you'll probably want to reboot the system in order to reset the resolution and begin setting up your environment how you want. I'm going to be posting several more videos that uh, get you started with Raspbian. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to update and upgrade your package manager, and then we're going to set up Raspberry Pi so that you can start using it remotely. I have many more videos planned in this series, including a tour of the OS, updating and installing packages, adding sensors and other components, uh, and just various projects that I'm working on, so stay tuned for more. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of these others that I've linked on the screen. Please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe, and check the video description for all the relevant links to this video. Talk to you later.